I'll have a story to tell you. In 2000, a little more energy, Adam. In 2008, I hope you get some form of cancer that's slow and, and non-lethal, but you know, painful. In 2008, suburban... Your, your, your nose is running. New Jerseyans Mike and Lynn Shapiro saw their one-year-old son come through a risky open-heart surgery successfully. Filled with gratitude, Mike scrapped his career as a litigation attorney in Manhattan, and he and his wife decided to, instead to pursue a future built around social good. Hopefully, he makes some money, too. The Shapiros put $250,000 of their own money into starting a digital newspaper in New Providence, New Jersey, where they lived and still live, and two neighbor neighborhood communities that would be high-quality, objective, and nonpartisan. That's nice to hear these days. If you don't hear, that doesn't happen that much. From so, these sites, so Fox News, New Jersey. <laughs> from these sites, the Shapiro's, the alternative press, grew into something called Tap Into. Um, most of the sites were converted into franchises starting in 2012. Converted? Today, today the network, rebranded as Tap Into in 2014, has grown to 57 franchises in 50 Jersey. 57? 50 in suburban New York State. A typical tap into owner is Jackie Lieberman, who converted the existing Westfield, New Jersey site to a franchise operation in 2012. A former magazine editor, Lieberman, said her tap into Westfield produces 100,000 hits monthly in a community of 30,000 and makes more than 100, six, six figures, six figures, $100,000 a year. Happy to have you on today, Mike Shapiro, tap into. Well, thanks for having me. Question one. Um, People are asking me, why is this going to work in this ever-changing paradigm shift in media and, and, and the internet? Why is Tap Into? What's its secret to working? And then we'll get to the more you know, nuts and bolts. Why? Well, at Tap Into, each of our sites is independently owned and operated and locally owned and operated, which is really important. Second is we cover local, original, local news content in all of our towns um, at a time when the traditional media companies are cutting back on their news coverage and laying off journalists. Uh, we're putting them to work, basically, uh, and we're able to cover everything from town council to high school sports and everything in between. Uh, you know, when I started Tap Into it and I would go to, for example, a New Providence council meeting, there'd be three other newspapers there plus me covering the council meeting, and today there's just me. Um, and so if we didn't exist in these towns, people wouldn't know what's going on in their town. Yeah. Um, so there's a, real op you know, there's a real need for this in communities throughout New Jersey. And... Yes, it's my business, but it's also my passion because to me, you need an informed electorate. And by us providing objective, nonpartisan news and information, people can make up their own minds. They don't need us telling them how to vote or what to think. Uh, but thankfully, because of our news coverage, people don't have to vote based on a you know, glossy palm card or postcard that they receive in the mail. They can actually know what, you know, what the candidates stand for and make a decision. Yeah. Tap also... Um what, what I like, it is the only niche that's left. That's mm -hmm. why Princeton TV, and, and, I, and let's say someone came in Princeton where you don't have a TAP franchise yet, and they go, I want a franchise. What support do you give them? How, what kind of turnkey? How does that happen? Yeah, we make it as turnkey as possible. So we, we provide the site hosting email accounts. Um, we do all their billing, all their credit card processing, and their advertisers. We train them on the uh, sales side, on the content side, how to use the site. Uh, we set up their social media and train them in social media. And then um, once they launch, we have four full-time, uh, full two part-time employees to service the franchisees, including two uh, full-time, two part-time editors to provide feedback to the franchisees about their writing, to copy check it post-publication. And we also provide them with all of the marketing materials that they need, contracts, an editable media kit, so that you know, basically they can focus on the news for their town and the ad sales to the local businesses in town. A uh, key to our model is that the sites can share content with a click of a button. So for example, if Princeton's playing, say, you know, Hillsborough in basketball, only one of the sites needs to cover it. Both of the sites can use that story. But more importantly, uh, it's also scalable on the advertising side. So for example, if there were a franchisee in Princeton, they could ha uh, reach out to any Princeton business and have them advertise not just on the Princeton site, but on other sites in the Tap Into network that that business may want to target for the, for, to, to, to get customers. Mm -hmm. And most, a lot of the franchises, you think, from looking at the numbers, are gonna, are gonna be successful and start making profits. Oh okay. yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and actually, uh, as of now, we, we now have 53 in New Jersey, five in New York, wow. and we've had over five million readers this past year. Uh, making us one of the largest uh, local uh, publications in the whole state of New Jersey at this point. Now, at the same time, they have to pay to get in, but you don't accept 
anyone just to get a franchise, even if they have the money. You uh, explain that. Yeah, no, I mean, basically, you know, what we're looking for are people who are connected in their town, ideally who have a business background. Um, you, we have a wide variety of different models. Um, we have where it's one person who does both the content and the ad sales. Where We have where two people do it together part-time. One does the content, one does the ad sales. We have five hard copy newspapers that have franchised from us to be their online site. Wow. Um, we have two nonprofits that have franchised from us to run the newspaper in their town. So one, it becomes a way for them to market their nonprofit. Second, it creates a new revenue stream for them as a nonprofit, and they're able to help the community at the same time. Uh, one of the nonprofits is the Plainfield Y, which is doing our, our Plainfield site. Um, we also have... Um, we also have uh, St. Bonaventure University as franchise from us. Orleans, New York, yeah, yes. As a uh, journalism practicum for their students. Uh, in terms of screening, we actually have a prospective franchisee committee, which is composed of some of our most successful franchisees, and they're the ones that approve a new franchisee. I don't, which mm -hmm. is kind of unheard of in franchising. Uh, I've empowered them because I want to make sure that the people that, that we have as franchisees really represent our brand well, uphold our reputation, and are gonna be a credit to us and to all of our readers who are gonna to come to know that tap into site. Mm -hmm. Do your franchises go outside of New Jersey now? Yeah, we have in five York. in New York, and we can uh, we can franchise in pretty much any state. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much limited in terms of my time to New Jersey. Um, though, if people you know wanted to start it in Florida or North Carolina or Texas, you know, we can franchise right. in any any in most most states. Because now you have full time employees. How many do you have working you know in the front lines with you? Yeah, so um, to service the franchisees, we have four full time and two part time plus me. Um, and so in really we're there, we even, you know, we put the ads up on the site for them. We can track all the ad statistics and provide that to the franchisee for their advertisers. Um, and we're there for any kind of questions that they have. It's basically 24 seven. Are, are these just, uh, individual websites for these newspapers or are they linked to Facebook? Well, they're the, um, the, the websites are all part of one overall site so that they can share content with a click of a button. So like, for example, if a franchisee sees a story on another tap into site and they would like to have it on their site, they just, we have a cloning feature where they can click a button and then it can go on their site, um, which is pretty neat. Um, similarly, like if a franchisee has a columnist and another site would like to have that column, they can just add that column to their site. Um, and, um, I mean, back to your question, uh, you know, there's, um, we also provide, we also create a Facebook and Twitter, uh, page for every single tap into site and train them in social media. We have two full-time social media, uh, directors who are there for any kind of social media questions to teach them how to post, give them tips on how to virally market their site and things like that. It's funny how with newspapers going out of business, you're, you sort of looking at a new niche. It's like when a tree falls in the forest. The, oh, the tree fell, but it opens up sunlight. And so you're seeing some sunlight here to grow your own niche. Yeah, and also there's such a need. I mean, um, there's over 100 municipalities in New Jersey that don't have any kind of local newspaper right. at all, not print, not online. Then you have a lot of these kind of what I would call media conglomerates buying up newspapers. I mean, Gannett just bought, you know, NorthJersey.com. They're laying off almost 50% of their reporters. They're closing 12 of their weekly local papers. Um, even here in this area, you know, uh, the Princeton Packet was acquired it's, and Greater Media hanging, was acquired. It's barely and, hanging on. The topics, because it's given away for free. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, I, I mean, you've heard me talking to um, Blue in the Face. Local's the only niche left. And it's getting passed by because, you know, because of the changing face of, of newspapers. No one could pay for local, you know. Yeah, and by doing it this way where it's, it's franchised and it's locally owned and operated, that enables us to scale on the advertising side and the content side while keeping our costs low, keeping the franchisees costs low, uh, which makes these ventures profitable in each of our towns. Right. You said sales was the biggest problem early on, teaching your friends. So you've tweaked that again with your social media experts and everything and what you've learned in the past couple of years, how to do sales? In yeah, sales? well, I still do the sales training for the franchisees, and um, you know, we've learned a lot since we began. One of the things that we learned was that um, in the beginning, uh, what we provided to advertisers was um, advertising coupled with content marketing. Um, and content marketing is like the hottest thing in terms of advertising these days. And so that stood really the test of time with us for what, the last what eight years. What is content marketing? Yeah, so basically, when a business advertises with us, they have an ad on the site that clicks through to their website, but the content marketing side is they can post events including sales on the calendar, they can post press releases, some advertisers have their own featured column where they can write as often as they want linking back to their website, that's content marketing. 
Um, since January, we introduced several new revenue streams, which are also advertising vehicles for businesses. Um, for example, um, we have uh, e-news that readers can get for free in the morning. And in the e-news, there's now three advertising spots and a sponsorship of the e-news. Um, we have sponsorships of each of the sections of the site. Um, and so Berkshire Hathaway Home Services and Atlantic Health and JCP&L are sponsoring those sections in many of our towns now, which one creates a revenue stream, new revenue stream for the franchisees, but also is a great way for these companies to market themselves and, and show how we are committed to the community. It's one thing to say you are, it's another thing to, to show that you walk are. Walk the walk and everything. Yeah, and then in addition to that, um, we also can do targeted email blasts for advertisers to the subscribers of a given town. And um, in December, our, our app is going to come out, which is going to help a whole new kind of uh, range of businesses. For example, um, a lot of local retailers, uh, ice cream stores, hair, hair salons, you know, those kinds of businesses who are looking for instant gratification from their advertising. And the app is going to allow us to do push notifications, offers, and things like that to all the people that download the app, which will be free. How do you get the local residents to go to your website if they haven't heard of it? Yeah, there's a, there's a number of ways. Um, one thing that we do is we provide a 30, 60, 90 day uh, plan to the franchisees about how they can virally market the site in their town. Uh, things like, for example, where they do a Meet the Leader series of all the key people in town. Um, and That's but, a good way to get interest. So that, that gets a lot of interest. Another thing is Word we do yeah. sponsorships of the street fair in town and things like that. Um, one of the things we allow under our um, franchise agreement is we allow the franchisee to uh, barter ad space with um, nonprofits and other organizations in town who are doing important community events. So those organizations are able to uh, receive advertising that would normally be prohibitively expensive right. for them to do, and in exchange, right. that site gets you know publicity as being one of the sponsors of that particular event. Right. Uh, there's a lot of things like you that. You hit the conduit for people who spread the information. Exactly. Well, in our remaining minutes, please give you a bona fide. This is exciting. Um, hopefully. I failed getting some people in Princeton to talk to, but hopefully someone in Princeton will see this. Uh, um, what's your number? We Not the first time he's failed. <laughs> and everything else. And, and you're so contagious and exciting. I mean, this can't help but succeed. I think someone's going to try to buy you. You might be a multi-millionaire, too. <laughs> I know you're not in for the money, but anyway. Yeah, no, I mean, we, well, you know, we love to find people. I mean, you know, we don't have any sites yet in Mercer County. We have a, a lot in Union and Essex and Morris and all over North Jersey, but we don't have any in, Mer in Mercer. We don't have any in Monmouth yet. Um, but in particular, I would love to find people in the Princeton area. Oh, there's um, so much talent here. Maybe oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and what's also um, interesting, too, is, is that you know, it, it keeps people so tied to the community. And, um, and we can cover so many different stories that a lot of these hard copy newspapers are no longer able to cover because they don't have enough journalists to go out and cover them. Um, and so that's important too. But you know, people can reach me. My, my cell phone, I'll give it out over TV, is uh, 908 Three seven zero one one five eight. They can also email me at m. Oh, look, our first call. <laughs> m. Shapiro at tapinto.net, uh, and people can go to tapinto.net and check it out, and they can uh, they can even sign up and get the e news. You know, email them to, to them in the morning because um, I know a lot of people in Princeton have relatives in our area, and so uh, right. the more the merrier. You okay. know, you might want to sell some coffee ads. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm glad your son's okay. And uh, please come back and you know, update us on TAP in six months or a year. So, but you got to remind me. Absolutely. I would love and to. And you'll get better directions. <laughs> well, thank you, Mike Shapiro. And TAP into TAP. It's, it's, it's growing. It's, it, you got to go with the rocket. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, your, your nose is growing. <laughs>